Welcome everybody to Top Shelf Tuesday Special Edition. So tonight we're going to be uh, actually this is not this is not a live segment. I'm sorry, we just had to tape it. So it's Monday. We're in Philadelphia. We're in a green tie because I lost a bet. Go Eagles! Uh, so if anybody is in uh, the vicinity of Philadelphia, you guys know what happened last night. The Eagles are going to the Super Bowl. So tonight I want to talk about two of my favorite things, watches and hockey. As you all know, I'm a big hockey fan. Grew up playing hockey, and uh, this story has, uh, that I'm going to tell you tonight is uh, very well connected to my past, to my present, and uh, hopefully my future. Um, a couple of months ago, we had uh, uh, actually one of my colleagues, George Meyer. George, if you're watching, George Mayer, if you're watching, thank you for the hookup. He gave me a phone, he uh, called me and he said, Claudio, he goes, Eric Lindros is coming to the store. And I went nuts. I said, the Eric Lindros? And he said, yes. So of course I started scrambling. I called all the guys up here to say, get ready, Eric Lindros is coming to the studio. Um, unfortunately, he, he didn't come to the, uh, to the store. Um, but uh, somebody from the Flyers organization did. Shannon, I want to thank you for coming by. And uh, they came into the store because they were shopping for a retirement gift for Eric Lindros. Um, so before I get into the story of how that happened and what transpired, uh, for any of you that don't know who Eric Lindros is, uh, growing up, for me, he was uh, definitely one of, one of my idols. Uh, you had Wayne Gretzky, you had Mario Lemieux, and in 1991, when he was uh, drafted number one overall in the draft. Uh, can we show some pictures of him back in the Oshawa General days? Well, there he is in the, uh, 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 when he was the number one overall draft. This picture right here, this actual card, if anybody collects uh, baseball cards, hockey cards, whatever it is, I, I mean, I had this card, and um, for me it was like, you know, before there was Sid Crosby, before there was Ovechkin, there was Eric Lindros. And, uh, I probably have about 10 of those cards buried somewhere in my house. There was another great iconic photo with uh, Eric Lindros sitting in front of all those uh, hockey jerseys. It was like winning the lottery. Who's going to get Eric Lindros? So anyway, at the time, he was drafted by the uh, Quebec Nordiques when they had a team. Um, he ended up not playing for them. He ended up getting traded, and there was a big... Uh, 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 lottery on who was going to get him, and uh, it was between the Flyers and the Rangers. So, being a New York Rangers fan, I was praying, please, 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 let let's get him. Unfortunately, the Rangers did not get him, but the Flyers did. Um, and there he is, uh, his tops uh, hockey card. So, from uh, 1992 uh, to the year uh, 2000. Uh, Eric Lindros played for the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, if any of you don't know, he was. Uh, the equivalent of a power forward uh, in the NBA. He was a super strong guy. He'd get into fights if he needed to. He'd check. He'd block shots. He'd score goals. I mean, uh, watching Eric Lindros in that era was probably one of the most exciting times of hockey. I'm sure for the Philadelphia Flyer fans and as a Ranger fan, it was a little bit bittersweet, but at least I got to see one of my idols playing hockey. Um, it wasn't until uh, 2001 uh, where they traded him to the Rangers, so that was my dream come true. And there he is with the Messiah himself, Marc Messier, uh, during the press conference. So I got to enjoy watching Eric Lindros for three seasons. Um, he ended up going to Toronto, where he's originally from, uh, and then he ended his career a year later in 2006-07 with the Dallas Stars, um, a career that was definitely cut short through injuries, being a big guy getting hit, all those years uh, definitely uh, uh, played a huge role in his uh, early retirement. He ended with uh, 760 games played, 372 goals, 493 assists, uh, 865 points. So he averaged more than a point a game, which is very rare these days, uh, and about 1,400 penalties in minutes. So he probably spent uh, about two minutes in the box per game. In any case, this was one of my greatest uh, pleasures when I heard that uh, they were looking to buy Eric Lindros a watch uh, as, a, as a retirement gift. And of course, uh, 
one of the things that I thought of was, uh, you know, why not go with a Rolex? And of course, the Philadelphia Flyer organization had the same thing on their mind. Um, so we looked through the case and we decided what would he like. And um, well, they picked out a Rolex Yacht Master, which I have right here. So this is not the actual watch that that uh, they gifted to uh, Eric Lindros, but this is the exact version of it. Uh, the exact watch was given to him on January 18th, so about a week ago when they retired his jersey. But this is the exact model. So for any of you who don't know, the, uh, the Rolex Yacht Master, this is a 40 millimeter Oyster case. It's made of steel and platinum. You have the monoblock, biddle case, screw down, case back, and winding crown. Uh, it's a 40 millimeter diameter. The uh, Rolesium, which is a combination of 904L steel and platinum. The bezel is made of 950 platinum, bidirectional. So it's a bidirectional rotatable bezel. Um, oh, 60 minute, graduated with raised numerals. I really like that. Uh, that look in this timepiece, the fact that you've got that brushed with the shiny, um, and of course the dial with the light accents of blue and gray. Uh, it's got a winding crown, the crystal scratch resistant sapphire with the cyclop lens over the date, and uh, I didn't have a double eight, so I set it eight just to have the uh, uh, little tribute to Mr. Lindros. It's water resistance up to 100 meters. The movement, it's perpetual mechanical self-winding. It's the caliber 3135, which is manufactured by Rolex. The functions, you have the center hours, minutes, second hands, instantaneous date with rapid setting, stop seconds for precise time setting. So it's basically, uh, if you want to set your time to the second, you can do that. Um, it's got the paramagnetic blue parachrome hairspring bi-directional self-winding via perpetual rotor. The power reserve is about 48 hours. The bracelet is the Oyster Flat three-piece links. So it's got that iconic Oyster bracelet with the 904L steel. You've got the clasp, which is the deployment clasp. You've got the blue on there. So as I said, this is not the exact watch that we uh, that we made for uh, Miss for Eric Lindros. The dial, well, the dial is really what I believe makes this watch. You've got the dark rhodium gray dial. Um, it's also got the uh, cr uh, chromolite display with the long-lasting blue luminescence. This is a superlative chronometer, COSC plus Rolex certification. So in terms of accuracy, this is the best of the best. Highly wearable watch for a big guy or a small guy like myself. There it is on my wrist. So today I got two Rolexes on my wrist, one on each hand. I've got the Submariner on my left, on my right, and I've got the Yacht Master on my left. So this is the watch that we got for Eric Lindros, but uh, I want to tell a little story about it. So obviously, um, after being introduced to the Flyer organization, we wanted to do something a little bit special. So we contacted them and we asked them, would you like to have this watch engraved for Eric Lindros? And they said, that would be great. And uh, so the next clip that I'm going to show you is, uh, is us taking the watch to go get engraved with the uh, number 88 on the back. Roll tape, please. So that's the... Uh, <laughs> That's where we had it engraved. There's our engraver, Mr. Winthrop. That was on the third day of January. I remember that was a freezing cold day. There's the engraving tool that he used. That's us explaining to him what we want done. There's the watch. And there he is setting his tool, making sure that it's in proper positioning. Um, so this was really cool, like I said, to be part of this, to, to not only, you know, choose or help choose the watch uh, that they wanted to gift to Eric, but also to sort of be part of engraving it. And uh, hopefully he enjoyed this, uh, ho hopefully he enjoys the watch right now. Uh, so there's our, our, 
our engraver who's making sure everything is precise in terms of, you know, we only have one chance to get it right. And shortly after, he makes sure that, that everything is in the right position. You'll get to see it's all done electronically. He puts in the font, goes through a computer, and uh, the rest of the work is done, as you can see over there. Quick job, I think all together only uh, less than a minute long to engrave uh, the entire watch. And there he is, handing it off, saying, there's your watch. So, Eric, we want to congratulate you in a, an amazing career with the Flyers, uh, just in the NHL, and definitely being uh, one of the most iconic players of the 90s. Um, somebody who probably would have had a much longer, stronger career. Uh, we know that uh, you, you fought real hard, you gave everything you had, and uh, unfortunately uh, the injuries took a toll, but um, you had a great career nonetheless. Uh, can we show a picture of the watch in the corner, please? Yes. About two seconds, I want to, and there it is. So the end result, number 88. Um, and uh, on January 18th, let's say uh, it was just last week, the organization, they raised the banners. Can we show some of those photos, please? There it is, number 88. Uh, let's get to some of the next pictures where uh, Lindros was honored in front of uh, the entire stadium. Uh, I think they even won that game in overtime, so uh, you never know how those tribute games are going to go, but uh, uh, luckily for, uh, for Lindros and for the Flyers, they won that game. And there he is with his iconic double eight. So uh, we want to thank you. Uh, we want to thank the uh, Flyers organization for first of all coming to us and thinking of us um, and entrusting us in putting together such a great timepiece for uh, Eric Lindros. And um, you know we love the fact that we were part of that history. Eric, if you're watching this, I want to thank you for uh, for all those years of, that, of entertainment. Whether I was a Rangers fan or a Flyers fan, well. I was never a Flyers fan, but I guess I now have to be. But for all those years of, of, of watching hockey, I want to thank you. And uh, also, I want to remind everybody that uh, uh, coming up next, you're going to see Watches Live with, T with Tim, so stay tuned. And don't forget to download the Watchbox app. Uh, stop by our store. Give us a call. Uh, we trade. We buy. We sell watches. Uh, follow me on Top Shelf uh, Claudio. Uh, to see uh, what I'm up to on a daily basis. And I want to thank you all for all your support. Really, it's a tremendous um, opportunity for me to be here, to be able to talk about watches in front of all of you. We've got some great shows lined up in the future uh, with, with brand presidents, with collectors, with celebrities, with athletes. So we've got a great program coming up, programs coming up for you uh, in the next couple of weeks. So please tune in every Tuesday, Top Shelf Tuesday. Until then, I want to wish you all a good night. Cheers.